Chord charts that match the multi-track are now available on loopcommunity.com. Even better, they will automatically match and follow your custom arrangements inside of Prime if you use the Music Stand app by Worship Tools. Every band member can use the Music Stand app, and their chord charts will stay in sync with the tracks. Buy chord charts individually for $1.99 or get unlimited access for only $12 a month. Head to loopcommunity.com to try it today. What's up, everybody, and welcome to Worship Fuel. Really glad you're here. My name is Matt McCoy. I'm the founder of loopcommunity.com and the host of Worship Fuel. And today I have a very special guest. I've got Anthony Evans with me today. He's a gospel worship artist, producer, songwriter, and I'm really excited to talk with him about leading worship. But we're also going to dive into topics like um, mental health and how you know how does that relate to leading worship and taking care of our minds and also talking about what are we doing with the other 23 hours uh, when we're not on stage. So um, actually it's a lot more than 23 hours because this would be the entire week, but we're going to talk about all these things. I'm really excited to dive into this with Anthony. So let's go ahead and bring in Anthony Evans. Anthony, what's up, man? How you doing? Man, thanks for joining us on the Worship Fuel Show. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. So, Anthony, for those who are watching this, maybe aren't familiar with who you are, like, how did you get started leading worship and writing music? But, and also, what what are you doing currently? Like, you're you're a gospel artist. What does your world look like right now? Are you on staff uh, at church? Or are you? No, I'm on. Well, there's a few different things going on with life right now. I'm not on staff at a church officially. I, I help my dad out with whatever he needs help with. Uh, my dad's been a pastor my whole life here in Dallas, Texas. His name's Tony Evans, and I have the privilege of, of being a part of what he does at the church. So I lead there once a month, and then I help with big productions because I, I have a whole production company, which we can talk about at some point. That, that It came about in a very interesting way. But the, that's what's going on in my life as related to church, like being at a the same church. Um, I have a whole worship situation where I'm out at other other churches, other venues, other conferences all the time. Me and my sister, her name's Priscilla Shire. We get to do a lot of touring together. Oh, wow, I didn't together. know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, That's awesome. So we get to do a lot of a lot of that together. And then there is, uh, there's like four major things going on. I'll, I'll give you the briefing. The uh, live events with my sister and with my family, I produce those live events. So there's seven this spring. So that's a whole thing in and of itself, wrangling my family and making sure buses and lights and all that stuff are all done through the team. And then I produce um, in, in LA quite a bit vocals for other artists that are outside of our genre. So currently I'm working on two songs and a, a, a BET feature for next Christmas. And then also working on a song with a, um, with a company owned by Kevin Costner, one, one of his new series. So producing that music oh. is happening. And then a new album comes out in a, on the 23rd of this month. So in a few, tomorrow, no, just tomorrow, Wait a minute. It's tomorrow. February. It's tomorrow. Friday. Today February, is, February. Tomorrow's the twenty third. Yeah. So I haven't. <laughs> so there's a new album that comes out. Tomorrow. It's coming out tomorrow. Yeah. All yeah, right. Yeah. So that's I just, <clears throat> that's how much is going on. So the worship. That's awesome. That's and that's a worship album. That's one of my normal um, scenarios. So there's a few different things going on in different directions, as you can tell. That's why I don't know what day it is. <laughs> wow, man. And you come from a very talented family. Gosh, oh, I did not know your sister is Priscilla Schreier. My wife loves um, her devotionals. Yes. Like her women's yes, studies. Yes, that's my slightly older sister, Priscilla. 
That's pretty awesome. And then your dad, of course. So what's the name of the church that you guys are at? The church is called Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship. It's in Dallas, uh, here, in, okay. here down the street. Mm-hmm. And how long has that been going around, going on? For 48, 47 years. Okay, so you grew up in that church. Like you were, yeah, you yeah, were a baby at the same, yeah, same church. Yeah, That's my awesome. dad started the church in an apartment built like in a, his apartment, him and him, my mom's apartment, and then it moved to like the clubhouse. And now it's, you know, ex- on 300 acres with the, you know, it's that whole thing. It's this whole story of just sticking with it, being faithful. And, yeah. you know, my dad has a global ministry now because he was just faithful with the small things that led to the next yeah. thing. Yeah. That's awesome. So, and you lead worship there once a month, you said. Yes. Mm-hmm. How did you start leading worship? What got you into that? Oh, I, you know, what's crazy is that I was, uh, uh, my career started in contemporary Christian music while I was touring with Kirk Franklin. He, I met Jason Ingram through Kirk Franklin, who now has written every, uh, most, a lot of the worship songs we sing in church. Jason Ingram got me my first record deal. Okay. So I was in contemporary Christian music, but I was too soulful. This was before the Mav City days where being soulful in worship is uh, okay. It was very much yeah. Anthony pick a side. Like, yeah. You're either going to be gospel or contemporary. There's no down the middle. But I was like, maybe not for the industry, but for the church there is. Like, I keep getting invited to these churches who want my sound on on contemporary worship. It's not, it doesn't have to be like a gospel, gospel song for to have soul yeah. to it. So um, that's how I, I kept my career going, was to be singing to the church. But then I noticed the church doesn't want to be sung over. They want to be sung with. That was kind of a the artist thing of like having the song that hits on the radio and then you go perform. That wasn't working for me. So naturally it was like, what works in church? And it's not mm-hmm. having a performer. What worked yeah. in church was me doing worship. I, I will never forget getting asked to do a, a event called Women of Faith. That was a huge tour when probably like 15 years ago. And I got asked to, to, um, uh, to lead there. Well, it was just Anthony come sing here. And at that point, I had done a worship album called The Bridge that was just a bridge album for me. It was just, I'm trying to figure out my place in the industry. So I made a worship album of contemporary songs redone. And when I got off the stage of singing, I think it was Everlasting God, but with my band playing it and with this whole vibe, I went and sat down to, next to an artist named Mark Schultz who looked at me and said, you just found what you're supposed to be doing. And I'll never forget him saying that. He's like, don't ever make an album that isn't worshipful again. I mean, that isn't overtly worship. Like you don't try to be the performer guy, come in and lead worship. And so that's how, that's how it started. Wow. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And you've got new music coming tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. And you already released a single. So eight, tw- yeah. eight, two, eight, or what, what, how do you pronounce it? Is eight, twenty eight, eight, twenty eight is what we call it. But eight, two, I mean, that's yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. So you released that last month. Tell us about that song and then tell that's us about the whole cool. album. Okay, got it. The, well, okay, that song, I'll tell you, the album's called Revive. 828, and it's basically made up of different songs. Some some are covers, and half it's covers, half are originals, of songs that have helped my heart come back to life. And scripture that's helped my life come, helped my heart come back to life. And one of those was Romans 828, which we all know so well. Um, all things work together for good. We, we know that. But sometimes I need to hear that truth in spite of my circumstance because I'm such an emotional dude. Like I can look at a circumstance and it doesn't feel like it's working out for my good. So I need to hear the truth. So yeah, um, that that's what this song is. The bridge goes to Ephesians 3.20 um, though. Um, uh, now to him is, who, who's able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask or imagine. A lot of times I stop right there when I say that verse, but the next line says, according to the power that's within you. The album is called Revive because I'm now connected to the power that is in me. And um, that's what the song is. It's just a reminder. And I love our vocal arranging, which is what I mentioned I do a lot in Hollywood, vocal arranging and all that stuff. So it's real complex musically and vocally, which I love, but it's just the simple truth of God's word. That's what that, that's what that song is done with an amazing string section, amazing horns, amazing singers, but that's what it is. Man, that's awesome. That's so great. And congrats, it's coming out tomorrow. Oh yeah, I, thank uh, you, thank you. I love too that you are interested in talking about a topic that I don't feel like I've heard worship leaders. I've interviewed a lot of uh, worship leaders, songwriters on this show, and no one's ever brought up this topic, and it's mental health. Yeah. And uh, I loved when it we got your sheet coming in of like thing of it, you know topics that you're passionate about talking about. I was like, that's amazing. I want to dive into that. And you know, a lot of worship leaders and pastors pastors struggle with that. It's funny, I was, yeah. this is a side note, but I was a pastor temporarily this past year, like an interim pastor. Yeah. 
And believe me, I've developed mental health issues from that. I like, totally it get was, it. It's so, it was so stressful. I'm like, past, being a pastor might be the worst job yes. in the world. It's taxing. It's, taxing. it's hard. Very, very ta being in professional ministry can be taxing. Um, yeah. And I believe that a lot of times it, it, we add to the, the taxing nature of it when we try to play injured. If an athlete is trying to play injured, some can do it. Some are so good that they can do it. And you don't actually realize that they are hurt but they're still playing. And my big thing with ministry in general is in order to heal a lot of times, you have to stop playing. And, and that, that play can look a lot, you can, you can stop, you have to stop playing that you're not hurt. You have to sometimes get off the court. You have to go to training. And I, I believe that that is a huge part of, of health and ministry is to understand that that's not, God never said play hurt. Like he never said like do ministry injured. So yeah. part of my injury was that I didn't really work through a lot of things that were going on in my mind, heart, and emotions because I thought as a believer, you're supposed to be able to pray this away. You're supposed to be able to, to read, read scripture and understand it. But I always liken it for me in algebra class in ninth grade, I had the hardest time. I couldn't understand a thing was going on. Miss Simmons, I will never forget my ninth grade teacher. Her name was Miss Simmons. She would go up to the board. She'd work out these formulas that were in this book that was right in my face. And I would have questions the whole class. I would have, I'd be lost. She'd say X equals six. And I'd be like, how does X equal six, you know? So there came a point where the only way I was gonna be able to pass was to get tutoring. The book was the truth. The formula on the board being worked out by an amazing teacher was the truth, but I had a hard time understanding how to implement that truth in my life. And that is what I like in needing therapy and help with your mental health to, uh, with, because we have a book of truths. We have the scripture. I have Dr. Tony Evans as my teacher and my dad, the best in the world, but there are moments where I need tutoring to understand how to be anxious for nothing. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with needing tutoring mental health professionals and faith professional psychotherapists to understand the book of truths. I think that that's okay. And that God has honored my try and I have done what I can to understand how to work these things out. And he's honored my try. And when I always say it, when I do what I can, he has done what I can't. And part of what I could do was seek professional help and in turn, he has revived my heart in my life. And that's what this album is about. That's awesome. Yeah. So for those who are in ministry, are there any triggers that you see that like typically might cause like, you know, mental health struggles for people in ministry, like worship leaders and pastors? Like, is there anything that, that you would recommend avoiding or a common, something that commonly throws people off? Yeah, I, I would avoid being disingenuous in general. I know that there, there are, you know, that's a very broad statement, but I think my dad told me at one point, um, a trigger for me would, he said, Anthony, you have to redefine what success is for you. Because right now in the industry, for instance, the industry dynamic of me, I was viewing success with being, I'm supposed to have a song on the charts. I'm supposed to have this much going on. I'm supposed to have all that. But in order to have that, I was going to have to be disingenuous to me and my calling to do that. My dad said, if you have a hit song that you made being disingenuous to yourself, you will have to sing that song forever. You will have to be disingenuous to you forever because that's what people will be expecting when you, when you show up. So you have to redefine what success as a worship leader is. It's are you doing what you're called to do? Are you pursuing opportunities God's put in front of you? And are you at peace? Because peace is the barometer because you can never go write a check for peace after being disingenuine to yourself. So my big thing right now for worship leaders is to be genuine, to, to be genuine to your calling, your specific calling, even if it's not the hot thing right now, to be, um, to, to, to not uh, fall into a trap that we can all fall into, which is kind of copycat worship. I would, I mean, if it happens to look yeah. like other worship movements, that's great. If, if who you are happens to look like that, but if you're kind of being, again, disingenuous to yourself, then that's mm -hmm. gonna create a, a big problem later. And I think it triggers worship leaders because you get exhausted doing that. Like that's exhausting. Um, I do think not knowing how to say no um, can be mess you up also. There are moments where it's like, I would prefer not to do that because I need to be responsible for my spiritual well-being. There's a reason why the Sabbath was a big deal to Jesus. You know what I mean? Like we were not made to, and, and those are just a few of the, I know I'm kind of rambling on, yeah, those are yeah. a few no, of the triggers. Being disingenuous, not knowing how to say no, and thinking ministry is supposed to be exhausting. No, it's not. Like, I don't know yeah. where in our culture we decided at some point you're supposed to be like over giving. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think. Totally. 
yeah, I think you have to come to a, sp a space where you go, I know that you may expect something out of me because of who I am and what you have seen me do. But right now I have to tend to myself. It's the same thing Simone Biles did in the 2020 Olympics that got rescheduled. Mm -hmm. Everybody expected her to be like, she's going to smash everybody in the world because that's what she does. But she had a moment where she got the twisties and was like, I know y'all yeah. expect me to be, be her right now, but for my well-being, I can't do this because I may injure myself permanently trying to be what you expect of me. Mm -hmm. And I think we as worship leaders have to know that balance inside of ourselves, know when we have the twisties a bit and kind of step back and take care of ourselves. Yeah. I have a hunch that the reason a lot of worship leaders end up being disingenuine is because there's this component to keep being on staff at a church that it's your job. So you have to keep performing. You have to keep your job. You can't just be like, well, how am I going to just, you know, this might be killing me inside, but if I stop, I'm going to lose my job and I'm going to not make any money. Like, right. So they feel like they have to keep it going because if they don't keep it going, they lose their job or they can't keep the ministry going. Like, what would you say right. in that situation? It, it's subjective because, you know, you have to know who you're working with, but I can't yeah. imagine a healthy church, like with a healthy leadership staff that would want you to continue to play injured. Like, I, I can't imagine them being like, hey, okay, well then let's figure something out. So for the next month, we're just going to have, like, we're going to bring up some of the worship leaders that are on, in, in the, on the vocal line and we're going to let them lead a little more. We're going to take some of the weight off you. It's not about you quitting. It's about some of the weight being off of you. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I yeah. think in a healthy environment, they should want that. So I, yeah. I, I know, but there are some environments where it's like, we know you may be emotionally exhausted, but you got to get up there. So yeah, I keep going. Like that's when, yeah, that the keep going thing is when you may have to question, like, I know I got to keep these lights on, but at the same time, when you have to, I'm just like, yo, I believe that God will provide a scenario where you are not like that. I don't think that God wants you to be in a scenario like that. I, I, I'm not saying quit, but I'm just saying you have to really evaluate the cost of going that far. I just believe most, most healthy churches would give you the time you need or try to figure out a middle ground where yeah. you can recover and not shut everything down at the same time. Yeah. Are there any healthy rhythms you'd maybe suggest to a worship leader who's just doing the day, you know, the weekly grind every Sunday, a new Sunday's coming around, the plan is set, do rehearsals. Yeah. Is there any like rhythm that you found is like, Hey, this, this could be helpful for worship leaders so they don't end up in a ditch. Yeah, I, I, this is going to sound so crazy. I, I really only talk in analogies, and, and I don't know why. It's because I'm Tony Evans' kid. I don't know. But I'm a <laughs> horse guy. This is random. It'll come around. I'm a, I'm a horse guy. I had horses all through my adult life. That's my catharsis. There was a, in order to keep, when I would ride my horse, I would always go a different way back to the barn so that it never became mundane. And he starts to just, like, beat me there. Like, there would be moments, if they, you do the same thing over and over and over again, there'll be a time where you can just let go and do nothing. And he'll just walk right because he knows exactly where you're going the same way in order to keep him connected to me as the rider and not like, I want you off of here. I'm going back home. I had to go a different way back to the barn. That That's how I kept everything interesting and him like in, in tune with where I was going. As a worship yeah. leader, I believe that we need to figure out different ways to go back to the barn, different ways to do worship. I know it's easy to be in the same Every week, it's this. It's going to be one of these 20 songs for now. We're going to do it the exact same way. I, between um, at my dad's church, we started something called The Collective, where it's not me. I, I Well, I'm there once a month because there are five other worship leaders. So we do things different. We mix and match the teams. We all show up and be with the more contemporary leaders or all show up and be with the more gospel leader. And we keep it super interesting. And then we figure out different ways in worship sets to change things up. Just... And sometimes, sometimes the smallest nuance can just keep you alive so that you're not just like, da -da 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 -da, here we go, doing the same thing over. But it takes intention because it's easy to just do the same thing over and over again if it works. Mm -hmm. Right. I totally agree. Yeah. So if a worship leader is listening to this and they're like, well, you know, mental health, whatever, can't think about that, can't worry about that. Is there any, like, why is it important for a worship leader to focus on mental health in I think regards it's to worship? Yeah, well, when it comes to you leading, the healthier you are, the more the worship experience is going to be a healthy worship experience. I think when there's so much going on in your mind and your heart, you cannot even, fo you, well, for me, I can't focus on leading worship. I become a, robot, a worship robot because I have, I'm so heavy that me connecting spiritually to the Lord, I mean, I try to be honest even when I'm heavy, but 
you know, in that, in that place, I just feel like you should do it. If you can't do it for yourself, you should do it for them. You should do yeah. it for what you, you know, in that, in that position, you owe them your best. I know we can't always be at our best, but you owe them and yourself the, 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 the try. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So I think, I think this applies and it's a little bit of a different topic, but although I think I see similarities in how, you know, worship leaders focus, spend so much time focusing on the time they're actually on stage mm -hmm. um, and maybe not putting as much thought into the rest of the week, you know, when they're in the office, right. actually working on the sets and scheduling people. And, and I think mental health actually could really fall into that of, you know, maybe you're not taking care of yourself the rest of the week at all. And you're just getting up on stage to perform that one hour. What, what's, a, what's important for a worship leader to focus on, on for the time that they're off stage? Yeah, I, I really do believe that in that, I know it's fast paced and I know we have to schedule the leader, get the songs, turn in sets, make sure the band, I mean, it's, it's a lot, but it's, it's, it's important in those scenarios to remember the love that you have for the Lord that created you being interested in this in the first place. I think sometimes you can lose sight. Athletes can be like, I used to love this game, but I don't like it anymore. Like I, it's become yeah. such a task that I don't love. I used to be the kid just playing soccer in the backyard. And now I don't ever want to see a soccer field again. I think it's that making sure that during the week you do things that remind you of your love relationship with the Lord and not the work relationship. There is a, there is a, and I'll say it this way, cause I'm on with worship leaders. There is a sus kind of thing that can happen inside of you when your relationship with God becomes him signing your check for mm -hmm. lack of a better way to say it. It, you have to remember, and be intentional about the love relationship. It's like parents, I mean, or couples after they have kids sometimes have to be so intentional about dating each other to remember, I used to like you, that's why we got married. Like we, yeah. you know what I mean? As opposed to yeah, all these yeah. tasks, these tasks now make it to where I'm like, oh, this is exhausting. I'm trying to, right. it's it's that individual balance of, of that as related to um, worship leaders in their relationship with the Lord, which is again, it's subjective and changes with everyone. Yeah, right. I love that you use analogies and you keep bringing up the sports one because I think that's very, very true. Mm -hmm. You know, if an injured player, like you don't want to have them keep playing on a, you know, broken ankle. Right. That's not good for the team. Right. Keeping with that sports analogy, I think too that there's sometimes worship leaders, and this can impact their mental health, of they maybe thought they were going to play for the NFL and they've worked yeah. their whole life playing, wanting to, and dreaming and striving to play for the NFL but they never make the team and right. they have to eventually kind of give up that dream and, you know, just play in their local <laughs> football. Right. League. And that could be, I think, pretty devastating for, for sure. a worship leader songwriter. Is there anything you would say to uh, someone kind of going through that? Yeah. I, I I'm trying to think of what, what direction to go with that one? Because I do understand the dynamic of, oh, but I wanted to do this. I, I wanted to go to Nashville and I wanted to be, you know what I mean? I wanted to yeah. be Cody. Like I thought I would be Cody. I thought I would be Brandon. I thought I'd be Phil, whatever. It's, I, get, I yeah. understand that. Right. There is something very, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a task, but understanding and trusting the Lord about his intention, him intentionally placing you where you are and if you are placed in a position that you think you can do, but the Lord didn't didn't necessarily have that for you, that's not great. If Simone Biles was a bat, wanted to play basketball, it would not work out for her the way that where she is. Like she was built for this. Like God mm -hmm. has very intentionally built you for where you are. And I think there's something to be said about finding, even though the dream's in your heart, not acting like it's not there, but saying there's something that that was the dream. But there's some, God knows that, he knows it. But there's something here that I'm not supposed to be missing in my local, in this local church scenario that I've been put in. And being wildly intentional about that, while not forgoing your dream, like developing, who knows if you were actually to focus there, your writing may develop to a certain point where the pub deals later, like the whole, your, your, the way you lead and the authenticity, authenticity behind it could be there. There was a period in my life and career where I was shut 
that just an example, it wasn't the church example, but in the industry, when I mentioned that separation of contemporary Christian and gospel, and Anthony, you have no place here really, unless you change your sound completely. I had no idea that in that setback, it was a complete setback to me, that God was wildly setting me up for what he has for me now, which I would not know how to produce music in Hollywood without having to produce my own music because I was rejected by the industry initially. And I'm not trying to create a poor me story. It's just, I learned how to produce yeah. my own stuff because I was like, I'm going to keep going as opposed to being like, they don't like me. I'm going to keep going. And yeah. that set me up for producing for some of the biggest artists. Like, why am I going to Mariah Carey's house to work on Christmas music? Because I was rejected way back at the beginning and I had to learn how to produce my own vocals. That's the, yeah. I'm not saying that's how the story, but there's a version of that for everybody. When you keep walking through what you may consider a setback, which for some people, they're kind of like, man, I wanted to be an artist. Yeah. Keep pushing forward, making that request known to the Lord, but don't forsake where you are. Yeah, love that, man. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, All right, before absolutely. we wrap up here, tell us about your production company. Uh, it's called Sherman James Productions, which are my grandfather's names. Sherman, Sherman, dad's side, James, my mother's side. They made a decision to change our family and make decisions for the Lord. And they had no, my grandfather had no idea he was raising Tony Evans and that Priscilla Shire would come out of that decision. And, and my other siblings, my grandfather didn't, Anyway, he didn't know that he was yeah. raising my mom, who was going to support me. I mean, they just made a decision to change yeah. change culture, basically. Um, so the production company came out of what I mentioned, me, me producing my own albums, and, and, and that happened. But then I was asked, uh, me and my sister, I was like, I want to do a tour with you. The industry's not really where she wants to necessarily be buried in big production deals. But I, I was like, I can do the tour. I've been doing it. So it became... That was back in 2015, and we conversed about it, and it became an over 40 cities sold out uh, venture with me and my sister. And I was having no issues with knowing how to do everything because of the setback time. Mm -hmm. Then when mm -hmm. I moved out to LA, so that the live event started happening. Went out to LA, and I did <clears throat> back when, um, well, Kirk Franklin was working with him. He was not able to do a session with Kanye for Kanye when he was doing the the Jesus is King kind of era in the life of Pablo. Yeah. And so he called me and said, Anthony, can you go do this session for me? So I went in and did that session for a song called Ultra Ultra Light Beam with Kanye. And that, I was already doing a lot of things in LA, but that opened up this vocal production thing when that choir -y sound became like a mainstream sound for a while. So it was Kanye and DJ Khaled and 2 Chains and Pharrell Williams. And I was just bouncing from studio to studio working with all these people under the umbrella of Sherman James now, which is a live event company. And then now it's a production company for, for vocals. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm kind of go, for, I'm talking so much today, man. Normally no, my answers awesome. are Keep not going. this long. I I'm love like, it. Oh my gosh, we get it. That's what I'm saying. I love head. it. Keep going. Okay. So um, that developed the, the vocal production dynamic. I was in a movie as an actor, side note, I got gotten a movie about gospel music on BET. I was in the movie and the director, Robin Givens, who if you saw her, you'd be like, oh, I remember her from head of the class and growing up like all these. Anyway, she was the director and she kept asking me questions about gospel music because I'm the artist in the movie. Then she goes, can somebody tell me why he's just not doing the music for this movie? This doesn't make sense. I'm like asking him every day. She just said it. And one of the executives came over to me and was like, do you want to do the music for this movie? So that pushed me into doing music for films, which I've done now three for that network. And, um, one of those producers moved to another a company and Kevin Costner's company. So now I'm doing music for Kevin Costner features. It's just kind of, I've, that's crazy. Yeah. I've made myself real, like wherever I'm, whatever I am doing now, that yeah. would be frustrating. Mm -hmm. My frustrating scenarios have turned into open doors over and over and over again. So yeah. that mm -hmm. now is um, the, the, basically the arms of the production company. And there's a publishing arm too. I've done a couple books, one on mental health with my therapist and one on disruptions that God allows in our lives with all of my family, with my sister Priscilla, my dad, and my sister Crystal and brother Jonathan. So that's the, wow. those are the arms wow. of the production company. And, and I, I love that because just singing is not enough for me. Like just leading worship a couple times a week, that doesn't, I need, I'm like, yeah. I need to keep the wheel spinning. Man, that's awesome. I don't even know how you keep all that going. And you bring Thank up you. Kevin hey. Costner, and I always, I always, when I think of Kevin Costner, I always think about, I had a, I grew up in San Diego, California, and oh, yeah. my best friend growing up, and they went to our church. My dad was a pastor, too. Oh, but wow. My, my best friend growing up in our church, her dad was Kevin Costner's stunt double. And oh, I think 
he still is Kevin Costner's stunt double. He's been doing oh, it for really? 20 years, and he looks just like Kevin Costner. And he does anything that Kevin Costner doesn't want to do, basically. Right, 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 right. I love it. So, That's great. Which at this but, point is probably a lot of stuff. He's like, I'm not doing yeah. that. Just have him do it. Yeah. I'll be there tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What? Uh, do you know yeah. that stunt doubles, a lot of times, just one of my friends was a stunt double for a show on HBO for a really long time. They get paid, whatever actor that they are doubling, they get paid that same rate. Wow. That seems, I don't know if that seems actually totally fair. Just because you are not really, like you, you aren't really that person. Yeah, but that person isn't jumping out of a window of a three-story building. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, maybe they should get paid more. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Well, a lot of times oh, they, they, I wouldn't say that that's always a rule, but a lot of times they get yeah. like, great. Oh, that's so interesting. Anyway, that has nothing to do well, with worship. It's just... Oh, man. Well, brother, thank you so much for taking the time to have this conversation. And we're excited about your new album coming out tomorrow. Everybody, tomorrow. go listen to this album. Yes. It's going to be out River. probably wherever music is, and that's awesome. It will be. Thank you so it, much. I it appreciate you. it. It was great meeting you, and uh, just thankful for everything your whole family's doing. So Thank it's you pretty so incredible, much. actually. Thank you very much. Great meeting yeah. you, too. All right. God bless. Okay, thanks. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. Anthony Evans there. Make sure you go listen to his new music dropping tomorrow. So tomorrow is February 23rd. Make sure you go listen to it wherever you listen to music. We'll have all the tracks up at Loop Community. The songs will be on CCLI and loopcommunity.com. So make sure you go check those out. Hit the subscribe button to stay tuned for future Worship Fuel shows. We'll see you next time.